Good evening, guys. Good evening. Good evening. This is the official start of call number 16, and I welcome you all to Money Monday. This is Tonight is Monday, June the 15th, and as always, I'm super excited that everyone was able to make it on the call tonight. This is the third call already in June, if you can believe it. We were just chatting before the official start of the call, and I can't believe it, but we only have a couple more weeks, and then boom. The first half of the year is already done. We have about two weeks until the official end, uh, or the official end of the first half of 2015. So, again, if, if you haven't realized it, let me be the first to tell you that time is not slowing down for anyone. So it's critical that we're making the best of all of our time because we don't get it back. As they say, there's, there's three ways, right, or there's three situations. When you lose something, you can't get it back. One of them is time lost. One of them is time lost, right? That's the first situation that when it's gone, it's gone. It's time lost. Number two, it's opportunity missed. It's opportunity missed. So someone in this call right now has missed an opportunity somewhere between January and June. So as we transition out of June and into July, which is the official second half of the year, make sure that you're not missing out on any opportunities. And the third thing that when it's lost, you can't regain it, that is words. Words, once they're spoken, you can't take them back. You can apologize, right? You can feel really, really bad about it. But when words are spoken, and they're spoken in a, in a careless and in a thoughtless fashion, you can't get those words back, right? So three situations. So I just want you guys to kind of have that thought in your mind as we proceed for tonight because the topic for tonight's call is five secrets to building or rebuilding trust with others. If there's a situation where you might have lost some trust or you might have gone through a situation where you're not doing a good job of building trust with those you're already in a relationship with or a friend or a family member, that's what tonight's call is all about. So if you guys don't know me, I'm Sadiq. I'm Sadiq Ali. I'm the founder of Millionaire Manners Academy. Um, there's several affiliates and ambassadors and folks that work with us, but um, – I'm really, really excited to be working with all you all. So I'm a speaker. I'm a trainer, lots of other stuff. But generally speaking, I just love to see people do better, um, especially our young people, because uh, that's the future. That's the future of the world. So whatever we're planting into the young people is eventually going to grow, and we're going to reap what we sow. So we better do a good old passion about spreading this information, information that was passed on to me by lots of different mentors and teachers and just people that cared about me. So it's only my duty that I turn around and try to give some of that information to, to, to the younger generation as well. So my hope is that also whoever's listening to this call right now, that you're also joining in and potentially listening in with a younger person or a younger person, feel free to invite your mom or your dad or one of your mentors or teachers, et cetera, because this information, right, is useful for everybody, including me. So each week as I'm preparing for these calls, I'm learning something new each time. Because remember, these calls are about belief, right, and expanding not only your belief in your own self, but also your belief in your own abilities, right? They're also about power, about power, and that is understanding your own power, the own ability that you have to change the world, but also the ability that you have to, to change your own circumstances, to change your own life, to change your own future. It's a powerful thing. And as you become more powerful in your own belief, that's when you're able to form bigger goals. Like, so my big brother, he always tells me, my big brother is one of my mentors. We're going to invite him on one of these calls very, very soon. But he always tells me, right, that either your goals, right, will shrink to match your mind or your mind is going to get bigger, right, to match bigger goals. So that's the whole point of these calls is to be able to expand our minds so we can focus on bigger goals. And last week we spoke about procrastination, right, and most importantly, how to crush it, how to crush it swiftly and decisively because if you're procrastinating and or wasting time, then, again, that's one of the things that you can never get back when it's lost. That is time wasted, time lost. So I want everybody to be thinking about that, especially as we talk about what, we, uh, what we're going to discuss tonight, which, again, is five secrets, five tips, five keys to building or rebuilding trust with others, okay? You know, as, as normal, we always cover some ground rules, which are have fun, participate, especially at the end when we do Q&A or testimonials about how you used the previous week's information. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. Or maybe the reaction that you got with someone that you love, know, or trust, et cetera, because that's a big part of it. That's how you learn 
is by teaching this information that you're getting from the calls. Hey guys, I'm not sure what happened, but I'm back. I got disconnected there for a little bit, but we're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep it moving. Um, but I, what I was saying is that, of course, you learn as you teach. That's one of the things that teachers will tell you is that you learn as you teach. So the more you're able to share from the information as you learn on a day-to-day -day basis, the, the better you're going to get it, the more sense it's going to make to you. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, make sure you guys follow us on social media, and if you don't have my number, I always get my personal cell phone number. So if you guys ever need anything, call or text me. Call or text me. My number is 443-271-3604. So, again, shoot me a text, a question, et cetera, and uh, we're going to keep this thing moving, all right? And, again, take some notes so that way, again, it's easier for you to recall what it is that you learned from this call, okay? So let's get going, guys. Um, every week we have at least one or two quotes of the call, one or two quotes of the call. So I'm going to read those for you guys right now. The first quote, okay, and this is all about trust, right, all about trust. Here's the quote for tonight or the first quote for tonight. You may be deceived if you trust too much, but you will live in torment if you don't trust enough. So I want you guys to think about that, right? I'm going to say it one more time. You might be deceived if you trust too much but you will live in torment if you don't trust enough, okay? So I want you guys to think about. Um, that's a very, very, very powerful quote, okay? Second quote, second quote, and this one is also very, very simple. The second quote is, a man who trusts no one, right, or a person who trusts no one is probably the kind of person that nobody trusts. So that's one of the first things that we're going to talk about, right, is that in order for you to be a trustworthy person, in order for you to build trust, you have to be able to trust other people yourself. It's just like respect, which is a two-way street. So we're going to talk about that, right? So I'm going to read that one more time. A person who doesn't trust anyone is probably the kind of person who no one trusts. So, again, you have to give trust in order to get it. Because if you think everybody's out to get you, the chances are, you're probably a person who's out to get everybody else. So I want you guys to think about that, right? So let's get into the information for tonight, guys. Five tips, five secrets, five secrets to building trust. Number one, keep your word at all times. Keep your word at all times. This includes the big things as well as sometimes we overlook the small things. For example, returning phone calls. You tell Again, your grandmother or your grandfather or a friend that you're going to call them back, but you forget or you get busy, right? You just lost maybe not a big amount of trust, but you just lost a little bit of trust with that person because you didn't keep your word. You said you were going to do something, and then you didn't do it, right? Another example could be something like being on time. See, every time we accept an invitation, it's sort of like a commitment. It's sort of like a promise that you're going to be there and usually be there at a certain time. So if you're not there at that certain time, you, again, you've lost a little bit of trust. You've broken a little bit of that person's commitment that, that they expected from you, that they entrusted with you, right? So, again, being on time, returning phone calls, and, again, especially saying that you're going to do something and then doing it, right, but not just doing it for the sake of doing it, but doing it the right way, and then, again, doing it on time. That's a really, really big deal. See, a lot of folks don't understand that. When you talk about keeping your word, it's, a, it's, a, it's another one of these words, right? It's a synonym, right, for a very important word, another important word called reputation. See, every time you give your commitment to do something, every time you give your word, you're also putting your reputation on the line at the same time. And remember, your reputation is what people say about you when you're not around. 
That's what your reputation is. And you don't want people to say your name like, oh, there's Sadiq again. You want them to be like, oh, man, look, there's Sadiq. We're excited. We're excited he's around. Right? So picture, how do people say your name? Do they think that, again, you're going to keep your word? What's your reputation like, okay? So that's secret number one is simply keep your word. Do what you say you're going to do. Number two, also very simple, number two, tell the truth. Tell the truth. This is one of the most important keys to not just building trust, right, but to building and keeping good character and a good moral compass, right? A compass, of course, right, points you in the direction that you want to go or that you need to go. Most compasses, right? The object of the game is for you to be heading north. That's up, right? So that's a metaphor for going up, for staying straight, right, for being in the up, for being in the up and up, for uplifting others. So a good moral compass is going to point you in the right direction. So another, another thing to sort of keep in mind when you're talking about telling the truth is that, you know, a, a famous saying is that if you had to lie about it after you did it, then it probably wasn't worth you doing in the first place because anything you do, it should be exciting. It should be worth talking about. It should be worth spreading good cheer about. But if it's not something that you have to be ashamed about or you have to hide or eventually lie about, then it probably wasn't a good idea to do it in the first place. And then you might even want to ask yourself, after you tell a lie, a story, a fib, or a little white lie, uh, whatever words that we want to call them, right, is that why did I have to do that in the first place? Why did I have to lie about it in the first place, right? So be thinking about that. The other thing about uh, about telling the truth, right, is about uh, being respectful and about understanding, just like I mentioned a little while ago, that respect is a two-way street and that uh, in order for you to tell the truth, respect has to be present. And that remember, like I said, respect is a two-way street, meaning that in order uh, for the other person to respect me, I have to give it first, not the other way around. Right? Leaders are proactive. Leaders don't wait for something to happen to them before they react. Leaders influence the situation to begin with. Okay? Leaders influence the situation to begin with. In other words, I'm going to give respect first with the reasonable expectation that someone and that other people are going to respect me in turn, not the other way around. I don't ask for respect first. I give respect first, just like I tell the truth first. And I expect other folks to be, in turn, truthful with me, okay? Leaders don't have that, that, that attitude, guys, that, oh, respect me first. Tell me the truth first, and then I'll, then I'll do the same to you. It doesn't work that way, okay? Respect is born from the fact that other people are human beings, okay? And that's a God-given right, not the other way around. Now, if someone doesn't respect you after you give them respect, then that's a different story. Now you have to have a different conversation, and that's something different because I don't advocate anyone being disrespected willingly or being disrespected over a long period of time. You have to stand up for yourself. But, again, if you're being a respectful person to begin with and somebody else doesn't respect you, that means you need to spend less time with that person and or give that person some feedback. Tell them about themselves, in a, again, in a loving, respectful way. And then you keep it moving. So all of that, guys, was tip number two, which is tell the truth. even even if it means sometimes telling the truth against yourself, okay? Number three, guys, number three is be transparent, right? Be transparent. You guys know like scotch tape or like packing tape, they call it transparent tape. That's because you can see through it, right? That's how you want to be when you're dealing with other people. But trust me, this is much easier said than done, and I will be the first to admit it, right? Being transparent is the cousin of being honest and telling the truth, right? But sometimes it can be even more challenging because it requires us to not just tell the truth about others or the situations that we find ourselves in, but guess who we're telling the truth about when we're being transparent? Ourselves, me. In order for me to be transparent, I have to tell the truth about me, about myself, about what it is that I feel, about what it is that I'm dealing with. That's a lot trickier than... Oh, uh, you know what? I have to tell somebody about themselves. I have to give somebody a tough message or give somebody else tough love. That's relatively easy compared with having to tell the truth about how you feel. So in those days when somebody says, hey, how are you feeling today? You can either say, oh, I'm feeling great. And deep down you might be feeling rotten. 
right? Those are some of the days where you have to, where you have the opportunity to be transparent and say, you know what, so and so, today I just don't feel that good, and here's why. Now the other person might not be expecting you to do that, and they might not even like it. They might not even realize what they asked you to do, or what an invitation they extended to you when they say, hey, how are you doing? But sometimes it's okay to to just be honest, to be transparent, and say. I'm not feeling really good right now, right? And, again, when I'm being transparent, I'm telling the truth to someone else about what I'm feeling, and it can be scary, right, because our feelings and our innermost thoughts are all that we have that's sacred sometimes. Isn't that right? Those are our innermost thoughts. Those are our private thoughts and feelings. And, of course, that's true. But, again, in order for you to be uh, courageous and for you to show courage, it means that you have to confront and challenge how you really feel and then actually find someone, maybe it might be more than one person, that you could openly share those feelings with to, again, not just build you know, a relationship with someone, but you can even skip a few steps and actually build a friendship with someone because that's a lot different than just a relationship. A friendship or uh, an, 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 an ally, right, that's someone who you can sort of trust and they can trust you, that you can build with and they can build with you. That's a powerful situation, but, again, it's built on trust, which is what we're talking about tonight. It's built on you having the ability and the willingness, right, and the courage, even though it's scary, having the courage to explain and and, and share your feelings with someone else. A lot of folks don't have the courage to do that. So, um, and, again, it's something that I I work on, and I, I, I have to do a better job of every single day, and I know that. But being aware, right, that's the first step. Number four, number four, the fourth secret to building trust is to give freely with no strings attached. Give freely, not of just your material items, right, not just of your material items, but of yourself, right, of yourself. That could mean your your skills, um, your talent, your ideas. It can mean a lot of different things, right, but not just material items. I want you guys to be thinking about giving freely with no strings attached. That means you just give, and your reward usually will come later on, and many times not by the person who you helped. But that shouldn't stop us, though. That shouldn't worry us because, again, what goes around always comes around. I really, really believe that. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow, but... All good things, right, all good things are paid back. So I want you guys to be thinking about, again, giving with no expectation of anything in return, just doing it because it helps someone else. And that's a, that's a foreign concept, especially in 2015, right, because everybody's sort of out for themselves. Everybody got an agenda. Everybody has something that they're working on. So finding a way to do this first involves sort of figuring out what it is that you're good at. What do you have an abundance of? What do you have extra of that you can give away? That's where you can start. And then the other thing I want you guys to keep in mind is that we discussed this a couple calls back, maybe call five or six, we talked about uh, how to build confidence, right? That was like maybe a two- or three-part series that we did was how to build confidence. You guys check the website, millionaire-manners.com slash moneymondays. You guys will find those old confidence calls. But one of the things that I talked to you guys about before about uh, how to build confidence is to give, right? It's to give. It's to help other people. That's one of the biggest ways to build confidence. It's also one of the biggest ways to build trust is that when someone can count on you that you're going to help them, even though they might not have the ability to pay you back or to pay you with money or give you something in return, you're building confidence and belief in your own self. This is a powerful, powerful thing that you can do to, again, give freely with no attachment, no strings attached, right? Cultivate your gifts and then use them to uplift others. By cultivate, I mean practice using them. And a free way to practice is just to give it away. You don't have to pay anybody. They don't have to pay you. But you're practicing with other people. You guys know that's one of my favorite words, right? Every single thing you do in life is practice for something else. So, again, number four was give freely with no strings attached, a great way to build trust with others and, again, rebuild trust that might have been lost. Number five, guys, the last sort of key I have for you guys for tonight, and then we'll do some recap and then take some questions as well. But 
Number five, guys, the fifth secret is to completely eliminate the blame game. It's to completely eliminate the blame game. There is nothing that's more destructive in a relationship than finger pointing. Oh, it wasn't my fault. I didn't do that. Well, no, no, you did. Well, I know I, know I might have done this, but remember the last time when you did this? Guys, there's nothing that's more counterproductive, more destructive than a finger pointing at the other person, especially when you know in your heart that you were dead wrong about so-and-so or about such and such, but you still want to point out what the other person didn't do, that's crazy, guys. That's crazy. That's not being a leader, and that doesn't build a great relationship. This is called being accountable. Being accountable is when the first question you ask when something doesn't go well, the first question you should ask is, what could I have done differently? What could I have done differently? Or, What part did I play in this situation not going according to plan? What situation – how did I contribute to the breakdown of this relationship or of this situation? That's called being accountable, right? Y'all remember the song by Michael Jackson? I'm looking at the man in the mirror. Y'all remember that? That was a song about being accountable. I'm asking him to change his ways. Y'all remember the words? I know we got some young people on the call, right, but everybody remember Michael Jackson. And if y'all don't remember that, YouTube that song as soon as, we, as soon as we hang up the call. Man in the Mirror by Michael Jackson, right? And, again, that's the woman in the mirror too, ladies, right? Ladies and gentlemen, everybody has to look at the person in the mirror and ask, how can you change your own ways? How can you become better? Not finger pointing at somebody else saying, oh, it was somebody else's fault that, oh, this relationship isn't working or that um, my friend isn't treating me the way or blah, blah, blah. That's not the way winners talk. That's not the way leaders talk. Leaders talk in terms of how can I be better? How can I be better, right? Anytime something goes wrong, the leader, the aware person, the strong person will always ask those two questions. What can I do better or what part did I play in this situation not working well? That's how you improve yourself, right, by constantly analyzing yourself. Not forgetting, though, right, to pat yourself on the back because we always have to do that, right, because if you don't recognize yourself, nobody will. But you have to do it in proper proportion and balance. So you pat yourself on the back a little bit, but then also you look in the mirror and say, how can I improve? So that was number five, guys, completely eliminate the blame game in the friendship or in the relationship or with your family member. Talk about how you can improve, right? Talk about how you can improve. Not finger pointing to the other person saying, it was your fault. Because every situation, there's multiple faults. Every time. Every single time. There's no, there's nothing that goes wrong that's just one-sided. It doesn't work that way, guys. Life does not work that way. And I will be the first to tell you. So those are the five tips I have for you guys to build and trust. We'll recap them really quickly. I'll reread these quotes of the night, and then uh, I'd love to hear from you all. So recapping, guys, five secrets to building or rebuilding trust. Number one, keep your word. Keep your word. This includes the big things as well as the small, usually overlooked items, things that, generally speaking, aren't that big of a deal. Keep your word, especially with those little ones, because guess what happens? If trust, right, starts off as a big old boulder, a big rock, every, thing, every single time when those little ones gets ignored, a little piece of that rock comes off, chips away, chips away, chips away until it's all gone. So that's number one. Keep your word. Number two, tell the truth. Even though it might be against your own self sometimes and even though it might not be comfortable, then make sure you always do it with respect. So, again, tell the truth. And it's always based, like I said, on respect. Number three, be transparent. Be transparent. That means see-through. That means see-through. Don't be afraid to share your feelings or what it is that you really think about a situation. That allows other people to feel more comfortable with you that, again, you're a trustworthy, right? You're a trustworthy person, someone who's not afraid to share their feelings. Because guess what? That takes courage. That takes strength in order to tell someone how you feel on the inside. So don't be afraid of that. 
And again, like all things, it just takes a little bit of practice. Number four, number four, give freely with no strings attached. That's one of the top ways to build trust and confidence in yourself and your own abilities. It's just to do things, but don't expect to get paid back right away. Just do it. Just do it. You will get paid back. I assure you, I trust you. Okay? Trust me. Now we're talking about trust. You will get paid back. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but eventually you will, I promise. And remember, not just giving material items, but of your skills, of your talents, of your thoughts, of your ideas. Okay? All of those counts. Number five, completely eliminate the blame game. Be accountable. Be a leader. Ask yourself, how can I improve? Not how can everybody, uh, how can everybody else around me change because I don't need to change. I'm already good the way I am. Negative, negative. No one is good the way they are. Everyone can get a little bit better. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how good you are. Everybody can get better, guys. So those are the five keys, the five secrets to building or rebuilding trust, guys. Star six to unmute yourself, and let me know what you think. Star six, star six. So if anybody wants to share anything that they might have used um, since the last call, last week, again, we talked about procrastination and making sure that we're not wasting time. If anybody has anything to share, let me know. Star six to unmute yourself. Anybody, anybody? <laughs> I just I just said guys oh, don't hello? Be, hello? don't be nervous to share. Yes, yes, who's that? Hi, my name is Tara. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Uh I just uh I just wanted to share uh this is my first time on the call and um Thank you for joining us too. You're quite welcome. And I really enjoyed and everything you were saying is, is so true because I am one of the first to say and to admit humbly what I have done wrong, but I just wanted to share that another thing that would help, that helped me, is believing in yourself a lot because I went through a surgery and it gave me so much faith in myself and just to believe in myself because sometimes when people can see so much good in you and you can't see it and you don't know why, it's because you're not believing in yourself. Now, so if you learn how to believe in yourself, a little more the things will happen. But when you don't see it and everybody else does, you can only fake it for so long because nothing's going to happen. You're going to stay at one level in your life. And once you start seeing that goodness, you'll start elevating, elevating, and then going out on faith and trusting and believing, and you'll, you know, get to that level and write things down and, you know, look in the mirror if you have to talk to yourself or write things down, write down like short-term goals and long-term goals and look at them and repeat them back to you, back and forth. So I just want to tell you I really enjoyed, you know, tonight and I'm going to try to come back on next time. And it's good to hear positive and, you know, people taking accountability for their own actions. And, you know, that's a good thing. So... Everyone? I really, really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. And mm -hmm. everybody else, everybody else's homework is to share the call, bring somebody in the call with you next week. Everybody bring somebody in the call with you next week. That's our goal is to continue to grow the cause. That was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that, Tyra. Anybody else, guys, who else wants to share? Yeah. All right, guys, you guys are being quiet again tonight. <laughs> star six, star six to unmute yourself if you want to add anything before we get out of here. All right, guys, thank you so much. Have an excellent and productive week. Hey, Sadiq. Hey, who's that? Sorry, this is Lance. Hey, what's going on, Lance? Not too much. How you been? Man, all is well. All is well. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to uh, touch base and just say uh, this is a very interesting. This is my first time calling in, and I'm definitely gonna uh, definitely gonna share it. Um, I enjoyed the event this weekend, and uh, this phone call was definitely uh, really nice. Definitely a nice way to start off the week. I really appreciate that, Lance. And like I said, especially with your students, man. Anybody that you um, 
anybody you can think of who, who will benefit from this information. Man. We try to keep it light um, and, again, most importantly, applicable, actionable. You know, we are, I don't want these calls to just be, oh, we're going to get on here and just talk. You know, I want us to be able to take this information and go and get better with each other. And so I appreciate it, Lance. And, you, and again, you did an excellent job this weekend, guys. Uh, what Lance is referring to is we, uh, we did our second conference for young men this past weekend here in Baltimore, and uh, it was just an awesome event. We had nine different speakers. It was just it was excellent. It was so powerful. So we we we're, we're still coming off that uh off the conference high too, a good high. <laughs> All right, guys. So if there's nobody else um, who wants to add anything in, we'll talk to everybody next week. Have a great week, guys. Peace.